Dad. Say, Jackie, why don't you take a look around the ranch, huh? I want to have a talk with the captain. About me, I suppose. Say, we've got a brand new foal down in that pasture. Why don't you and your pup go down and look him up, huh? Come on. His head is on low. Shines in his eyes, but how could they go? His love has been taken. That's the tale of the sad, sad heart. A heart that was gay is now full of sorrow. A heart that was gay can now only cry. He lives through each day. Jack. You're Ben, aren't you? You have good memory. Captain told me you're coming out to stay for a while. You mean Grandpa. He likes Captain better. That's your dog? Yeah. Nice to have a dog around here again. Mountain I got our last one. Well, no mountain lion's gonna get you, Hansel. You're all I have in the whole world. Come on, Hansel. It's my fault, I know, coming between Jackie and his father the way I have. But you haven't come between us, Sheila. I've told you that. And besides, I've got a right to get married again. As a matter of fact, a, a duty. Jackie and I haven't lived a normal life since Ellie died. We need a woman around, Dad. I need a wife, and he needs a mother. You see, Jackie's lived in such a special world. His books, his dreams, his imagination. Neither Bart nor I can convince him that I won't be a wicked fairy tale type stepmother. As well as he knows, Sheila. Oh, I, I can make him understand and to love me in time. I'm sure of that. I'm sure of that too, my dear. But we are going to get married, Dad. We'll have our own adjustments to make sure. Well, that's why I called you, Dad. This being summer vacation anyway, and besides, I think a change will do both Jackie and us a lot of good. <sighs> You don't need to explain or apologize. It's time I had Jack out here for a little while at last. It should have happened a long time ago. I think she's a door prize, Bart. Wish I'd have seen her first. Hey, I think we better get out of here quick. Don't forget your books, Jackie. You wanted to bring them all, but there wasn't room. I hope you brought time enough to read them. Don't worry about us now. We'll get along just fine. It's time Jack and I got to know each other better. How about that, Jack? Sure. Sure it is. We'll be calling you, son. Goodbye, Jack. Bye. Goodbye. Time for a ride before dinner. You like horses? Huh? I don't know. How can a grandson of mine not know if he likes horses? I haven't had much time to find out. 
where we're going to make up for that, starting right today. So let's get your stuff unpacked. Hey, Jack, that is a cute little pup. Why'd you get him? The county fair. County? What'd you do, win him? No, he was lost. Dad said we could keep him. He can roll over, can almost. Can he? Watch. Roll over, Hansel. Roll over. Hansel, roll over. Hansel. That's his name. I named him after the boy in the fairy tale, because he was lost, too. Jack, do you still believe in fairy tales? Sure. Doesn't everybody? I love him. And I love my dog, too. Well, come on. Let's get started. Come on, Hansel. Greatest country in the world. I could ride it forever. <laughs> Almost have. But if you're out here by yourself, though, early in the evening, you better watch out for mountain lions. Yeah, I know. Ben told me about your last dog. They call them cougars out here, but they're the same thing. Woods are full of coyotes, all kinds of farming. You tell that dog of yours to be careful. Hansel, you look out for varmint. <laughs> Jack, there's my favorite view of the ranch. Mom. Ah, fall over your horse and give your saddle a rest. That's the wrong side, Jack. You get on an awful horse on the left. Who's left? His left or my left? This way. Come on. Oh, I remember when your dad was a kid. He used to love to ride. He was a born athlete. Swimming, baseball, track. There wasn't anything he couldn't do. I guess it's not so easy, though, with that. Go ahead and say it. Gimpy leg. I know what it means. What's that for? Just brushing that chip off your shoulder. Oh. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. I didn't either, Jack. I've gotten so used to my leg, I've, I've kind of forgotten about it. That's good. Did you know me then? When? Oh, when I was three and my mother died and... I had polio? Sure. I used to come to see you in town. I wanted to bring you out here at the ranch, but you were too sick to be moved. Don't you remember? It's all sort of like a dream now. Fairy tale. Jack, comes a time in a boy's life. When he outgrows fairy tales, or should, and has to face reality. Reality? Mm hmm. You, you mean like my mother's dead, and that I'm lame, and that I had polio? What's better, that or fairy tales? Jack, there's one thing I'm going to have to insist on while you're here at the ranch. Don't ask me questions like that. Hey. About time for Ben to have soup on. Come on, we get started back, huh? <clears throat> Quick work out on the bars every morning. Your dads are down by the stable. Swim in the stream, you'll be ready for a big lunch. Ben, why don't you go heavy on the groceries with him, because we want to see some meat on those bones. OK, Captain. Then in the afternoon, Jack, you can work around the ranch or do a little exploring on your own. If you keep his eyes open, maybe we'll find a hidden treasure. <laughs> Don't you ever give up, Ben. Treasure? What treasure? Years ago, long before I owned this ranch, the stagecoach trail used to come down through this valley. It was always being held up. One holdup was a Lulu. Shipment of gold headed for the mint in San Francisco. They caught the robbers, but they'd bared their loot first. Nobody's ever found where. At least that's the story, and Ben won't give up looking. 
Excuse me, Jack. Hello? Oh, Jonas! Hmm. North wind? Here? Why? Well, sure. Bring him out in the morning. Mrs. McDonald? Sure. Bring her out, too. I've always wanted to meet the great lady that owns that fine racehorse, North Wind. Stay. Now, wait a minute, Jonas. We've got lots of pasture for horses, but not much room for women. Sure it is. Very exciting. The robber had a map, but they couldn't even find the trailer themselves when they went back with authority. All they know was a slight rise above the valley, three oak tree in a row, and a cave they covered with boulders. A whole fortune go. Many people have tried to find it. No luck. Who knows? Maybe a young boy like you, Greenwood, sometimes makes a hot fire. Jack, we've got to make a change. There's an old friend of mine, a horse trainer I was talking to. He's coming out here the first thing in the morning with his horse and the lady who owns it. She wants to stay here, so I better put you up in the tack room. Tack room? Oh, you'll be all right. She's got a bed and a chest of drawers. Hans will be all right in the tack room? All right. The last dog I had wouldn't sleep any place else. Come on. Your dad thought it was a great treat to sleep out here when he was a kid. It'll be fine. Just fine. Oh, there'll be a few bats at night. Don't you get used to them? Horses, they'll be right next door. Good night, Jack. Handsome. Don't let him tease you, Hansel. It's a good name. But did you hear what he said about the mountain lions? Coyote? Varmints? This isn't civilization, Hansel. We gotta keep our eyes open. Robbers hid the gold in a cave. Near three oaks in a row and on a little rise. Sounds like a coyote, maybe even a mountain lion. That's what you gotta watch out for, Hansel. Sure sounds like a farm. It's just an old horse, Winnie. Well, we can't sleep with the lights on, I'm afraid. Sir. Call me Captain Jack. When your dad was a kid, he'd chin himself 50 times every morning. 50 times? Mm hmm I'll never be able to do that many. You may be right. Come on, let's go take that swim, huh? And... Hey! Here comes Jonas and his great horse, North Wind, a real champion. Sam, give us a hand here. Come on, Jack.
Hello, Captain. Jonas, good to see you. Mrs. McDonald, Captain Connors. How do you do, Mrs. McDonald? How do you do? This is my grandson, Jack, and his little shadow, Hansel. Well, let's get North Wind out. Here we are, North Wind. What's the matter with him? It's a long story. He's a very sad horse. However, Jonas tells me you have quite a way with horses. Bring my boys. That's it. Uh, let's put him in the paddock for now, Sam. Yes, sir. And be very careful. You'll be quite all right, Miss McDonald. Did you see that, Jonas? He walked right by that little dog and didn't even notice him. I just don't know what I'm going to do. Well, I think the first thing you ought to do is to tell me what makes your sad horse so sad. But let's hear the story over a cup of coffee, huh? There's my house. Jonas Lyle, fetch your bags. Thank you. Like I told you, Jonas, I don't usually board women. I only have one small bedroom for her. Ah, uh, that doesn't matter. Just doesn't want North Wind out of our sight, that's all. What's the problem? Well, he didn't do a thing at Hollywood Park this season. The worst disappointment she's ever had. More distressed than when her marriage broke up. That's strange. You're gonna be fine here, boy. Nice cool water in that trough. A little later, we'll put you out the pasture. Is he sick or something? Doesn't look sick to me. Just kind of droopy. Sad, like she said. He's kind of noble in his sorrow. He was going great as a two-year-old. Top horse of the year. All set for the Kentucky Derby. Then something happened. I don't know what. Close the gate when we go out. What's the matter, Northwind? What is it? It would help if horses could bark like dogs. Then we could understand them better. This is Hansel, Northwind. Roll over for him, Hansel. Go on, roll over. See that? Now sit up. See that? Looks at you like you're an empty bucket, Hansel. Boy, you sure are a sad horse. He was just a little fox terrier dog that used to hang around the stables. Everyone called him Ramsey, but he was North Wind's pal. The day he disappeared, North Wind started dropping back and hasn't won a race since. I know that may sound silly. No, not silly, Mrs. McDonald. All horses have their mental quirks. Well, North Wind certainly seems to have more than his share. From the first night he was foaled deep in a pasture in the middle of a cyclone, he's been terrified of the very wind that gave him his name. And two years later, this love for a little fox terrier dog. You should have seen him, Captain, running around like two kids playing tag. It was like a moving painting. I'm afraid I can't replace Ramsey for you. What happened to him? Well, I don't know. Lost, stolen, maybe even died. The reason we picked your ranch, Captain, was to give Northwind a complete change of scenery. I hope it will help him to forget his, well, his lost romance. I want to get down to the paddock. Mrs. McDonald, you want your horse to have complete change, huh? Then leave him alone. Well, you don't mince any words, do you, Captain? I'm sorry. You are welcome to stay here at my ranch and give it some class. But I've found that pampering horses often aggravates their problems. Well, frankly, Captain, I need to change myself. You see, I have a lost romance to get over, too. Jonas tells me your pasture's just fine. Lady, I, I heard what you said about the dog. I took Hansel down, and he did some tricks for your horse. But you were right. Northwind didn't notice him at all. Well, thank you, Sonny. It's been a long time since I had a woman make my decisions for me, Jonas. Maybe too long. She's a great girl, Captain. Stubborn as a mule, like all women, but a great girl. <laughs> Jonas? Jack? Take that swim? No, sir. I thought I'd do a little exploring, like you said. Good. Uh, get Ben to fix you up a sandwich. And uh, don't get lost. Don't stay out too late. And what I told you about those big cats. I won't. <laughs> I mean, I will. <laughs> Jack. Yes, sir? Slight rise above the valley. Three oak trees in a row. It's near a cave covered with boulders. And one more tip. 
Supposed to be due north of here. Not less than a mile, not more than two. Near a crooked fork in the trail. And uh, it's Captain Jack. Thank you, Captain. And a boy. Well, there's the crooked fork. And the three oak trees. Certainly is a little rise. Come on, Ansel. Crooked fork. Oak trees in a row. I wonder those robbers couldn't find it again. Let's give it one more try. Those look like boulders. Look, Hansel. A gun. An old gun. Probably been. Get back, Hansel! Get back! keep some of this antivenom on hand. You can't tell when a snake's gonna tangle with one of the animals. And it's a good thing that snake didn't tangle with you. And it's a good thing you got that pooch back here when you did. All right, hold him, nurse. Come on, hold him. Hansel, this may sting a little, but not as bad as that rattler. Tough getting it in the shoulder. You can't put on a tourniquet. Now we'll wash the wound out with a little antiseptic, and in the morning your dog ought to be all right, or... Or what? <laughs> He'll be all right, Jack. Come in. Ben, the cook told me there'd been some trouble. Mm-hmm. Rattlesnake trouble. Oh, no. Hit the dog. I'm so sorry. He'll be all right by morning. Where was the snake? Up in the foothills. Oh, don't worry, Miss McDonald. I've never seen one in the pastures. You and your dog better stay out of those foothills. That's where the treasure's buried that we were looking for. I found that gun over there on the dresser. What do you call it? A, a derringer? <laughs> derringer, Jack. Short barrel pocket pistol, named after its inventor. It's great favorite for pirates, stagecoach robbers, daydreamers, television riders. That's about all I can do for you, dog, Jack. You've been quiet and nice and warm, huh? I will. Hey, this is a beautiful little gun. You know, it's an amazing thing what turns up in these hills. Spanish corns, old wagon wheels, skeletons. Skeletons? Mm-hmm. Ben found one, almost a complete one. It was a man's, only their head was missing. Sounds like my first husband. Oh? Delightful fellow, with a delightful name. Dallas DeVoe. Look just like Lord Byron. Without a head? <laughs> he had a head. He's in Switzerland now, using it to charm some European princess out of a fortune. And the incumbent? Bill McDonald? Mm-hmm. Has one of the best sense of humors I've ever known. Very funny man. Sometimes a little bit too funny. But that's enough about me. What's a, an incumbent? 
That means Mr. McDonald and I aren't divorced. You mean you're still married to him? Well, in name only, since he hit me. He hit you? He even smiled slightly when he did it. Why would anyone hit a pretty lady like you? Jack, don't you think that's enough questions? Uh, why did he hit you? <laughs> to tell you the truth, I hit him first. You see, I entered North Wind in the futurity at Belmont Park. Mm -hmm. I went along with him. I didn't know Bill was so set against it. When I returned, he said... <laughs> well, he said things that I didn't like, smiling or not. So I hit him, he hit me back, and I walked out. Well, I don't blame you. No man should hit a lady. Not even in self-defense. Well, it's after six. When does the bar open around here? There's cots and sodas coming up for my lady. Jack, Ben will be served in a few minutes. I'd, I'd rather stay with Hansel. All right, I'll have Ben bring you something out here. I'll be building Mrs. McDonald a drink because we've got to convince this dear lady that chivalry isn't dead and all men are not villains. Madame, away to the bar. Sunset had never run again. Look at him. That horse was in real trouble. Where's the north winds? Couldn't breathe. Vet said asthma, and I said small. He's been here six weeks, and look, he's a small cyclone. <laughs> cool him out and bed him down, Sam. A lot of horse. All I had to worry about with North Wind was a little bit of smog. With the stable you have, why is that one horse so very important? I experimented, crossing bloodlines. Even Jonas told me it wouldn't work. But it produced North Wind, one of the top two-year-olds of the country until he started losing. Then it's a theory that matters and not a horse? They both matter. You don't know what a personal tragedy it is for me to see that beautiful animal who can outrun anything from Hialeah to Hollywood Park just standing there like a statue. Well, I'm not a horse uh, character, but maybe if you got him another dog. Oh, you've seen him with that dog of your grandson's. Pays no attention to him at all. Captain, hmm? do you think there's any hope? Well, he's only been here a week, Mrs. McDonald. You asked me to call you Captain. I think you better call me Leslie. Thank you. Leslie, if you had a broken heart, would you get over it in a week? Seemed to be. I suspect when your husband hit you, he didn't hurt your heart nearly as much as he hurt your pride. And pride's a dangerous luxury. Only a very brave person can afford it. Well, no one's ever exactly accused me of being a coward. I'm sure of that. But a successful marriage takes just as much courage as a horse race. That depends on how fast the track is, Captain. Hmm. Well, I'm not here to win any marital sweepstakes. Just to get North Wind back in the winner's circle. Mm-hmm. To prove a theory and to show everyone they were wrong, huh? I suppose maybe you're right, Captain. To prove my theory. Remember what I said that night that the snake got you? About grown-up people having their troubles, too? Well, I've been thinking a lot about that pretty lady and her sad horse. She said that she brought him out here so he could forget about his little fox terrier pal. But he doesn't look like he's forgetting, or act like it, either. Maybe it was wrong bringing him out here. Maybe animals and people don't forget just because of a little change of scenery. 
Hansel, you know what's happened? We've let one whole week go by without hunting for that buried gold. And you're okay now. And we know what to keep our eyes open for. Come on! We were on our way back when it jumped out of a bush right in front of us. Beautiful deer. The biggest anglers you ever saw. Anglers? You know, horns. Jack, you mean antlers. Whatever they were, they were the biggest. He stood there so proud and sleek in the sunshine, but then he was gone. I thought you'd earned your lesson about those hills. Uh, about rattlesnakes. But Hansel and I can't stay cooped up for the rest of our lives. It's a pity you didn't have a gun with you. A gun? Why? Deer season's open. It's a great sport. Those antlers make wonderful trophies. You mean kill the deer? Venison's a lovely delicacy. Kill it and, and eat it? Would you kill Northwind and eat him? <sighs> well, that's different. Why? They both have four legs and brown eyes and hearts and feelings. Ah, Jack, let's just don't get carried away. Why can't people leave other living things alone? Why do they have to shoot them and stuff them and hang them on walls and then lock them up in cages? Hallelujah and amen. Yes, it's about that time for a certain young man I know. Hmm? I'm sorry. I guess I did get a little carried away. But they were the biggest anglers you ever saw. It's a wonderful thing for a boy like Jackie to have an experience like this on a ranch. If I had a son, I... Hmm? Go ahead. It's nothing. Go on. What's that? A wind coming up the valley. Generally does this time of the year. Well, I hope my horse is safely locked up for the night. I told you the wind spooks him. I'd better go see... Sit down, Leslie. Sam's been locking up horses here for a long time. Leslie, tell me about that son that you've never had. Well, a woman can't run a racing stable and raise a family at the same time. I took my choice. And this husband of yours, this fellow Bill McDonald, was that his choice too? Captain, will you please stop trying to get me back under the same roof with Bill McDonald? I doubt it, my dear. Let's say goodnight to Northwind. What's the matter, boy? Is it the wind? It's only a little breeze. Northwind, Hansel and I have been thinking. You've been causing an awful lot of trouble. I know it's tough losing a friend. But one dog's like another, well, sort of. Hansel would like to be your friend. Look at him. He's trying to be friendly. Why can't you try, too? Whoa. Whoa. It's nothing. Really. I mean, we ought to leave him alone, like the captain says. a cyclone.
wind's out. I've got to catch him before he hurts himself. Oh, not that way. Go put some clothes on. There isn't time. Leslie, will you please, for once in your life, do something somebody else says? Go put some clothes on. I'll saddle a couple of horses and we'll go look for North Wind. all worked up over just a little wind. Now calm down. That's a boy. That's it. Come on, Hansel, let's take our friend home. I don't know what I'm going to do. Apparently nothing's happened to your horse, Leslie. Here's your horse, Mrs. McDonald. He's trying to catch up with the wind and get away from it. I don't know which. He almost did both. I'm very grateful, Jack. Oh, that's okay. I couldn't sleep anyway. On my way? Hop aboard, stranger. Put your foot in the step. Now, up you go. And stick on. Right. You on? Yep. All right, here we go. <laughs> See, North Wind? Isn't it more fun being pleasant and having a good time with your friends? It's a miracle, Jonas. He's completely snapped out of it. You once said that watching North Wind play with Ramsay was like a moving painting. Oh, this is even more beautiful. Well, come out as soon as you can. We'll put him in training tomorrow. Ah. The bride and groom. Congratulations. Thanks, Dad. May I? Be my guest. <coughs> Delicious. Where's Jackie? I'll let her get away. That's enough for today. You'll be all worn out. Hi, Jackie. Oh, hey, you look great, son. Just great. You having fun out here? I'll say I am. Shows it. Oh, we didn't bother to call. We wanted to surprise you. We? Oh, Sheila and I. Say, I didn't tell you, did I? We were married Saturday in Las Vegas. Oh. Well, is that all you can say, son, is oh? 
Now look, Jackie. I know you're gonna have a little adjustment to make, and so are we. But it's gonna work out just fine, if we all try. So what do you say we pack up all your things and take you home, huh? I don't want to go home. Well, no one does after a vacation, son. It isn't that. It's that horse out there. He was pretty sad when they brought him here. Then he got spooked by a windstorm, and Hansel had to rescue him in the foothills. Well, he's getting better now, and I don't think we should leave just yet. Hansel and me. All right, then, son. We'll leave Hansel here, if you like. But your school starts Monday. Oh, I wouldn't leave Hansel. And there's schools out here. No, Jackie. Now, look, son. Summer vacation's over. It's time to get back to Earth. Dad, I don't want to go home with you. Maybe I don't remember my real mother very well. But, but Sheila isn't her. I know that. Oh, not that again, Jackie. Why can't you leave me alone? I'm happy out here. The captain likes me. He won't mind. He's your grandfather, an old man. Now, he may not seem like it, but he is. Besides, he has his hands full here, son, with the ranch and all these horses. Well, he can't raise a boy. Isn't a lot of the raising of me already done? But you're only 10 years old, son. Ben says green wood makes a hot fire. Ben and his proverbs. It's true. I found a derringer, and I, and I killed a rattlesnake. I hope I did. And I saw the biggest buck in the world. And I even helped rescue North Wind. I can grow up to be a man out here. He'll only let me. You can grow up to be a man at home, too, Jackie, where you belong. Now, come on, let's go. No! No, I won't go! I won't! I won't! Jack! He wants to stay here. He just won't listen to reason at all. But let him if he's happy. We have plenty of room. But it just isn't right, Dad to treat Sheila like this. It doesn't matter, Bart. Bart, you remember right after your mother died, we were left alone out here? Just you and me? Yeah. And there was that neighbor widow, Mrs. Clancy. She sure made a big pitch for me. For you, too. Brought pumpkin pies, favorite preserves, favorite kind of fudge. But you'd have none of them. For her either. I tried to tell you then it wasn't a normal life, a grown man, a small boy. Being the only family each of them had. Did you say that, Dad? Sure did. Those were the very words. Well, I might as well have been talking to myself. Mrs. Clancy scored a clean miss. Well, have made my point? When she's coming out to meet Mrs. McDonald, she's the owner of Northwind. And Bart, give Jack a little bit more time. He's a good kid. He'll be all right. Well, I, I tried. I know. Come on, let's go meet Mrs. McDonald, like your dad said. OK. Mrs. Clancy. I couldn't have been a trap. 
All he has to do is think about where his next worm comes from and look out for fish hooks. For a hawk. Nothing to do but float around in circles. Keep from bumping into clouds. Or even a squirrel storing up Christmas dinner, even in the middle of September. It's kind of hard being a boy who's lame, has no real mother. You better start back now, Hansel. Mm -hmm. Father, mother? She's not my mother. She would like to be. You just aren't giving her a chance. Well, are they gone? Yes, and Mrs. McDonald was looking for you. She's down there with a the horse. Just as long as they're gone. That's all. Here he comes now, Northwind, with Jack. My horse thought he'd lost his newest playmate. Oh, we just went for a walk. Still seeking that fortune? No, just thinking. Ben said you wanted to see me. I want to talk to you about Hansel. Hansel? What's the matter with Hansel? Well, I think North Wind has fallen in love again. It'd be the best thing that could possibly happen. Of course, it... I'm glad. I want your horse to be happy. Well, I was wondering, would you sell Hansel to me? Sell Hansel? Name your price. I'll pay it. How could you think of such a thing? Well, I don't want North Wind to crawl back in his shell again. Start eating his heart out. He needs Hansel to play in the pastures with him and ride in the horse truck when he travels, sleep in the stall with him. Hansel can play with North Wind and maybe even ride with him. But he's going to sleep right where he has been sleeping, on my bed. He's used to it. I'm sorry, Mrs. McDonald. But Hansel just isn't for sale. Well, Jackie, maybe you'll change your mind. There's Jonas. Hi, my wife. My distant, stubborn, horse happy. My one and only beautiful wife. Phil, what are you doing here? I was invited. Invited? By whom? Oh, I believe he said his name was Chris Connors. People call him Captain. They call me Captain. That's what the man said. Bill? Captain? I told you we were through. It's all over. This isn't going to work. There isn't a chance. Now, where's Jonas? He couldn't make it today. I suppose you arranged that, too. I did. Well, North Wind is just fine. He's found himself another little dog. And I called Jonas to ask him to come out to start working with him. Well, I didn't want you to find another little husband, so I thought I'd come out here and start working with you. Bill. Oh, am I going to have a good long talk with you? <coughs> Took it better than I thought you would. Well, Leslie's all right. Just have to remember one little angle if you want to get along with her. What's that? Give her her own way about everything. Mm -hmm. Where are you putting me? Now, with your wife, where else? We're simple folk out here in this country. None of this here is in hers business. Right through that front door, young fella, and turn to the left. You're not going to get away with this, you know. With what? I've had it, Bill. I'm through. As soon as I get back to the city, I'm filing for a divorce. Oh. On what grounds? Desertion when you walked out on me? You hit me. One little slap. One slap too many. It's a nice ranch. Yes, it is. It's been just the right place for North Wind. 
hasn't done you any harm either. Don't touch me, Bill McDonald. I think there's time for a drink before dinner, now that you're here. I don't think the captain approved of my drinking alone. You know, he seems like a swell guy. He is. Just has some rather old-fashioned ideas, that's all. Like a woman should act like one? Bless me. I said don't touch me. One little slap. And you hit me first. Oh, it's more than that, much more. We're just not meant for each other, that's all. Well, we should have thought of that the day of the wedding. <laughs> Better late than never. Oh, no trite sayings, please. Well, that was a hot day, wasn't it? Remember how the sweat rolled down the minister's neck? I've had a lot of time here, Bill. A lot of time to think things that over. kept buzzing. I, I couldn't get rid of it. So we made a mistake. And then later on, the hotel room in Buffalo, the, the wallpaper peeling off the ceiling, and the train whistles blowing away the kisses. There's no reason we should keep paying for it. The maid? What was her name? Uh, Hilda. <laughs> how her eyes popped when she saw the rice in our bed. Bill. Yeah, you're right, Leslie. A mistake, all of it. We didn't mean to get married. Didn't mean to go on that honeymoon. Didn't mean to be husband and wife. Just one of those accidents that happen to two people when they think they've fallen in love. Crazy man. What about that drink? Why did you have to come back? Why couldn't you have just left well enough alone? Is, is this your husband? Well, that's right, Jackie. But I left my horns and my forked tail in my other suit. Did you come to get Northwood? No, I just came up for a little visit here. Grandfather asked me. Why? Hmm. Why not? But I thought that... I thought so too, Jackie. Well, here's to me, the unwelcome guest. Salute. Here he is, a ten-year-old boy I'd never even heard of before today. Somehow you turned him against me before he ever saw me. Oh, nonsense. What are you doing? I'm making your bed. Well, I don't sleep on the floor, have you forgotten? Well, then I will. Tweezers? Tweezers? What have tweezers got to do with this? Only to pair to get the splinters out of you. Oh. Mice. Where? What about mice? Little white ones in ranch houses in the country, scampering across the floor and anything that happens to be lying on it. Maybe nibbling an ear as they go by. Did you leave? No, I'm still here. Darling, I haven't complained too much about you and your horses, but when you start sleeping, standing up... I'm not sleeping. Oh, do you remember that double bed in that hotel room in Buffalo? It's like sleeping on a sack of ball bearings. Well, not that it mattered too much, but... This is like a cloud. Kind of lonely, slightly cold cloud, but still a cloud. Would you promise to stay on your side all night? If you wanted a writing? This isn't Buffalo, Mr. McDonald. No, but uh, just in case we're both wrong and it turns out to be, I uh, locked the door so as not to startle the maid. Mm
You were right, Les. It is a miracle. He looks as good as new. He's happy again, that's all. We'll be taking him home this afternoon, Jonas. You bought the dog, Les? No, the boy doesn't want to sell him. What are you going to do about that? Well, I'm not going to let it stand in the way of North Wind running again. 18, 19, 20. But no one will ever believe this, Hansel. I will, Jackie. I thought you were out hunting for buried treasure. Oh, I've given that up. I never thought I'd really find it. Just hope. Well, hope keeps us all going, Jack. Anyway, uh, buried fortunes make good legends. Legends? Well, stories from the past, taken as fact, but not always proven. Is it a legend that you hit your wife? Did she tell you I did? Yes. Then let me tell you something. I may not sound very gallant, but there are times when the only thing you can do with a woman is hit her. Oh, I don't mean beat her up. She said you smiled when you hit her. Well, now that's the thing that hurt. But I don't want you to think I'm the monster she painted me. Leslie's not herself, I guess, worried sick over Northwind the way she is. Too bad she can't worry about husbands. I know about Northwind. I know the way she feels. Well, she even wanted to buy my dog. She hasn't told me that. I mean, you know how sad her horse was. Well, now he's happy. And it's all because of Hansel. I guess she's pretty mad at me now. But I don't think she's ever looked at my side of it. I understand, though. If I were her and Northwind were my horse, I'd care more about him than I would about me. How old are you, Jackie? Ten. Why? Well, that sentence sounded a little older. Much older. Do you want me to talk to her about you and your dog? Would it help? Well, I doubt it, but I can try. Well, don't hit her. <laughs> I won't, Jackie. At least I'll try not to. You better get lost. Hi. What are you doing here? Oh, just looking for my wife. Most men don't have to start at a stable, though. I knew Jonas would be out early. North Wind's back to his old self again. It's really quite a thrill. Oh, that's what makes me tingle all over. We're going home this afternoon. Have you seen Jack at the dog? Mm hmm Do you mind telling me where? The dog's going home with North Wind. How are you working that? To get Hansel, I'm setting up a trust fund for Jackie's education. So the captain's on my side. Isn't it bad enough having your horse split up our family? Why do it to Jackie's? Bill, you don't know what you're talking about. Leslie, you're quite a woman. You're not much of a wife, but still quite a woman. You've accomplished a lot, been a lot, but there's one thing you haven't been, and that's a 10-year-old boy. I have. I know what a dog means to a 10-year-old boy. Aren't you being overly sentimental? Look at what's at stake. What? The boy's a human being. That dog's his pal, his friend, his companion. It means much more to him than a little money. A little money? A college education comes pretty high these days. About $5,000. If he doesn't want to use it for that, he can use it for his limp or his leg. Oh, look, Bill. Northwind's already lost the other little dog, and if he loses this one, he may never get over it. So he doesn't get over it. So he never races again. So what? Nothing to be lost but some races and a few purses. It isn't the purses and the races that matter. It's the bloodline. And my theory oh, your that... theory. You're so hell-bent to prove your theory is right, aren't you? Regardless of how you hurt anybody else. I know you'll get the dog, Leslie. But it has nothing to do with the boy's education or his bad leg. Bill McDonald, don't make me want to hit you again. Because I really don't want to. You do, and I'll take you over my knee and give you a good paddling, instead of a little slap. You wouldn't dare. Oh, I definitely dare. And with considerable sadistic pleasure. Saved by the bell. I'll see Jackie at lunch. Is that you, Jackie? I know you're up there. Did you hear all that? I, I guess I did. Well, $5,000 is a pretty good price for Hansel, Jack. For any dog. Well, you better come on down. Lunch is ready. I don't feel so good. I guess I'll skip lunch. 
tell them for me, will you? Okay, I'll tell them. But that won't put my wife off your trail. She said the captain was on her side. Because of the $5,000, I guess. It is a lot of money. A fortune. Not a buried one, either. We've got to find that gold today. We'll show them we don't need her old money. Animals form strange attachments. I remember on the farm I was raised on, we had a cow and an old goose. They were inseparable. Well, Leslie, I guess that's all your horse needs is a good old. Hey, Ben, do you take Jackson lunch? No, Captain. I couldn't find him. Couldn't find him? Why not? He was not in the places where I looked. Well, he has to be someplace. But we can't leave until he's found. Bill, you said you saw him. Where? A rafter in the barn. He you overheard your generous offer, and that made him a little sick. Bury some gold in It's a little time for us to find it. Come on, get some. It's five o'clock, Les. If we're ever going to leave, we better start now. We can't leave without the dog. Whatever could have happened to Jack, Captain? Many things, my dear. After all, he is a boy. He knew we were leaving. Maybe that's why he took a powder and his $5,000 bloodhound with him. What do you mean? Run away? Well, he's never been gone this long before. Let's go take a look for him. Hansel. No wonder it's getting cold. If we go back now, without the gold, they might take you away. He's not around the ranch in place. Possibly he's going out searching for buried treasure again. Well, it's almost seven now. It'll be all right. He's a smart kid. There's some awful smart animals out in those woods, Bill. Bobcats, coyotes, mountain lions. He has the little dog with him. No, Leslie. The dog has that little boy with him. Ben! Ben! We see the trail. We may have to stay out here all night.
was an old mountain lion when we first heard it snarling. But it sure scared Hansel. Well, I'm glad Ben got there before you got scared. I'm very grateful to you, Ben. It wasn't hot, Captain. Not for Daniel Bunfong, who know these hills like a pup. And have lots of luck. No waffle? <laughs> no, water was plenty. <sighs> I'm sorry, North Wind. I tried the very best way I knew how. Well, anyway, we're going home. We're all hitched up, Leslie, and ready to go. Okay, I'll go get my things. What about the dog? I don't know. How big was the lion? Over six foot. Ought to be a record. That ought to make a keen trophy. <laughs> How is he? Well, he's a little shaky, but it'll be all right. Can't go in. Why not? I just want to see him. Sorry. I guess Hansel and I can get up now. All right. Jack? A present. <laughs> Open it up. They're just like yours. I only wanted to say goodbye, that's all. You said enough already and caused enough trouble. <laughs> you can't blame that mountain lion on me, now, really. I thought it might have been one of your novel experiments at crossing bloodlines. A cougar's and a ten-year-old boy's. That's a terrible thing to say. Sure it is, but how else can I say to make you understand? If he hadn't overheard your magnanimous bribe in the stable, he would have heard it later. Bribe? But well, I've never seen anyone as short-sighted as you are. Then take a look. Name, Leslie McDonald. Sex, female. Status, married. Or thereabouts. Hobbies, butting into other people's lives and making a general mess thereof. Leave me alone, Bill. Past imperfect. It's too bad, too, because it could have been a perfect past. Present, indicative of more trouble to come if you're not careful. Future, lonely. Perhaps very lonely. You and your glib tongue. Well, at least you won't be lonely. The world's full of susceptible women. I don't want a world full of women. I just want one, my wife. But on my own terms. Terms? You mean a bargain? No, Leslie. You're no bargain. I was just about to add... your priceless merchandise. Me and my glib tongue. Jack, as you know, Mrs. McDonald is very anxious to buy Hansel. She's offered to set up a trust fund of $5,000 for you to have a college education. Oh, that'd be a great help to your father. Did you phone him? Did he say it? No, he, he said it was up to you. But Jack, a college education will last you all your life. Hansel won't. You may be losing him pretty soon, maybe in a couple of years. Might as well face that fact. We can always buy you another dog. After all, Hansel, he's not the only dog in the world. Well, he is as far as I'm concerned. And as far as that great harsh north wind's concerned, too, it seems. Oh, Leslie, leave him alone. the education part. Well, there are all sorts of ways that even crippled people can get along these days. Jack, you're never crippled as long as your mind don't limp. And yours certainly doesn't. Well, I guess they're leaving.
Maybe he's right, Hansel. Maybe I should think of North Wind's side of it. I can read and write, but he can't. I can watch TV and, and go to the movies and even chin myself 20 times. But he can't do that either. All he can do is run, like the wind, like his name. But he can't do that without you, Hansel. Tried to do. Young boys sometimes have strong convictions, Leslie. Well, is he all right after last night? Huh. I think he captured that mountain lion single-handed. Your wife's been crying. Yeah, she sure has. Because I wouldn't sell Hansel to her? No. Because she's leaving? No, not that either. Then why? Did you hit her again? Oh, Jackie, I didn't hit her. She's just too uh, happy about something, that's all. That's why she's crying. Well, I don't like to see women cry. Even if they are happy about something. Hansel, I'm not going to say goodbye. Just feel it. Leslie? Yes? I want Hansel to go with Northwind. Oh, Jackie, I won't take him. I was wrong to make such a fuss. See? He wants to go. So he's yours in Northwind. But only as a present. I don't want any money. I won't take any. Bill won't let me have him. He won't? Does that matter? It's all that matters. Well, your husband has nothing to say about it. It's up to me and Hansel. And we've made up our mind. Take care of each other. Lock her up, boys. I know how much this means to you, Jackie. I don't know what to say. Then don't say anything. Just don't cry. All right, Jackie. I won't cry. Proud of you, Jack. That was a manly thing to do. I feel like I found that buried treasure. Like Bill said, it was only a legend, I guess. But mountain lions sure aren't legends. That was a close call. A little too close. Well, he wouldn't have gotten handsome, no matter what. I'm there. That's Dad's car. I asked him to come out today. Sheila, too? I mean, my new mom? Sheila, too. Do you mind? Gee, no. I've had a swell time out here with the captain. Now it's time to get back to Earth. And besides, school starts Monday. Jack, you asked me something once about fairy tales. You told me never to do it again. I know, but you kind of caught me with my answers down the end, but I've got one for you now. Jack, you were wrong. Fairy tales are not better than reality. I know that. I've learned it out here this summer, Grandpa. I mean, Captain. <laughs> I'll go get my stuff. All right. 